So today was a very important day because it was the first chapter, the end of the first chapter of our journey that is called Life360, where we, that we presented three years ago uh, in 2020, and we had objectives in 2023, 2026, and 2030, 360. Um, today was important because we showed where we were at uh, regarding these objectives, uh, and today was important because we decided a few years ago to be as transparent as we can regarding all of these objectives, which means that for some of them we are um, you know, performing very well, we are even uh, ahead of the objectives that we uh, fixed, and for some others we are a little bit late, and we try to explain why, we try to, we try to, to be a very a didactic uh, to you know, our stakeholders, to the public, uh, to our clients, and uh, the event today was uh, the showcase of this uh, first chapter. In the past, we've talked about reducing water use, about using renewable energy in your stores in particular. Uh, today, there was specific focus as well on working with your suppliers, and that's a really difficult one to manage. So tell us a little bit more about that. Yes. Um, if you know a little bit about this topic, scope one and two, which is what you can you know, do yourselves in your own uh, uh, workshops, in your own stores, is relatively easy to, to change and, uh, and the results arrive quickly because you know you just uh, basically switch off the lights and, uh, and uh, um, we saw that a few years ago when we decided to shut the lights during the night which is something we didn't do in our windows uh, it reduces immediately and, and quite uh, significantly emissions. Um, in our suppliers it's very different. First of all there are countless of them but we don't control what they do and how they act so we decided to launch for this new uh, chapter of the, the Life360 program, uh, a program called Business Partners, Life360 Business Partners, where we're going to help them, to train them, to help them also um, financially in certain cases when they cannot do it themselves because some of our partners and suppliers are small companies. You know, we have the chance to have the means to do what we want to do. Uh, sometimes they need a partnership. A little bit earlier, the chairman and CEO of LVMH, your father Bernard Arnault, was on stage and he said the fight against climate change can be efficient only if it's envisaged as a full industrial strategy. So is that the case now for LVMH? Is that your industrial strategy to count with sustainability? It, it has been for a while already, but now it's uh, more and more clear and uh, we, we say it even louder than we used to. Um, we used to be a little discreet about this, you know, our environment, our environment development uh, uh, department exists since 1992 at a time where it was not very fashionable to have uh, that uh, inside your, your company. Now it's important to show what you do. Uh, this is uh, the symbol of uh, also uh, this uh, uh, showcasing of, of what we do. Uh, we're not shy anymore. We just want to show that we do the right thing. We're not perfect and we don't try to pretend that we are. Um, of course, we continue to open uh, uh, new ateliers, we open stores, we believe in growth, um, we believe in uh, uh, sobriety, but not in austerity. We don't want to you know, pretend that uh, we're going to stop growing or try to stop growing. It's not at all what we want. I reassure the CNBC spectators, <laughs> um, but try to do things as, as good as we can in terms of uh, the environment. Are you under growing pressure from your customers, from your employees, from your investors to be more transparent and to be stronger on this kind of sustainability targets? Absolutely. The, the, the three stakeholders you just mentioned are the ones that we look at constantly. Um, even if there's a, a little bit more probably on the customer, uh, he's really the one that you want to please in the end. If you don't please him, then you have a problem. And they are more and more, of course, uh, knowledgeable about this, uh, these issues. They're going to check online what uh, you, you know, how you do, how you make your product, uh, not only environmentally, but also socially, you know, working conditions are very important. Um, traceability is very important to the, to the customer. So we try to be, uh, you know, as good as we can on these, uh, on these issues. Uh, as for, you know, uh, financials and uh, um, the people that, uh, watch your, your TV channel, of course we, we look at that. One important aspect also of this uh, Life360 program is the regulator. We try to, you know, especially for our suppliers, to reduce the impact of the regulator that can be a little bit uh, heavy. Um, the fashion industry, of course, is often seen as a key culprit when it comes to carbon footprint. Uh, but you say that 
it's very different for the luxury industry yes. compared to other fashion players and fast fashion in particular. So you need some specific standards for the luxury industry. And you've invited actually some of your competitors here today to discuss it. So can you elaborate a little bit on this? Yes, a few years ago there was a, a little bit of a, a melting pot. Like the whole textile, fashion, fast fashion, sporting equipment and luxury industry was, th was thrown in, the, in this pot. And you said, you know, you're the second most polluting uh, uh, and emitting uh, industry in the world. Like, okay, but when we look at our data very, very finely, uh, that's not what we see at all. So we decided to you know, not sign a certain pact that, uh, that uh, we were very criticized a few years ago to, to not sign. And now everybody is following us and everybody says, well, you know, listen, yes, we have to look at this specific luxury industry. By the way, we're not a fashion group. We're a luxury group. We have wines and spirits, which are not fashion. We have hotels, which are not fashion. We have uh, watches, which are not really... Uh, technically fashion so we decided to yes create our own alliance and start to open up and work a little bit more in open source and uh, we've been speaking with our competitors for a while and uh, today they even came on stage and started speaking about uh, what we could do together in the near future. Can I ask you about COP28 because of course you were there yourself, yes. some say it was a historic agreement yesterday, some say there are some loopholes but can I get your sense from the business leaders you saw there, from the policy makers, do you feel like people are actually really grasping the urgency and are really ready to act? I do, what I can tell you is on the corporate level um, we are and uh, the 200,000 employees of our group are. What I see in my competitors' uh, uh, teams is they are too. Um, I cannot speak for all the industry, I cannot speak for other industries, but I can say that I've been feeling a big, big change in the mindset and the philosophy of the way things need to be done in the past five years that's uh, unprecedented. So I'm quite optimistic. In the corporate world, I'm quite optimistic. COP, I was there. Uh, for corporations, it's a, a good platform to meet, to exchange. I think it's very important for states to, to go there, and indeed, apparently, they, they signed a historical agreement. For us, it's more, you know, a, a place to, yes, to exchange and to be able to meet with each other.